If you're going to report that the Spurs broke an all-time attendance record last week, put a little respect on it. 68,323 Warriors fans did not fly to San Antonio. Good God. Run it back. Starts now. Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up. Good morning and welcome to Run It Back. Look at this chipper and sunshiny group of young men. As always, Stadium Insider Sham Sharania joining us back at home. It- Chandler Parsons still has not been released from whatever camp he's been uh, detained. <laughs> and there's Eddie. Eddie, you look great today, bud. Thank you. Um, <laughs> the, the the Celtics fans also took over an arena this weekend, so don't feel bad, Michelle. <laughs> Dude, when I tell you though, that, that thing last week was awesome. And it was such a big memory lane and it was only because San Antonio, look, let's not, we're not going to have any secrets here. The San Antonio team right now is not going to win the championship. So people showed up to have like a big memory party and it felt very emotional. I just, I used to be the national media and I didn't like us then. And now that I'm not really on that platform any, I don't like them even more. So that's all I have to say about that, but let's get this bad boy started right away. Um, look, Sixers Lakers, let's just start there and let's just start with what happens at the end. Play it, please. He sides it him up. And he got away. No Lakers. Shot clock is off. They're down by one. They're not calling a timeout. Russ, oh, nearly loses it. With five, with four. Russ drives. Oh, it's underneath. And the Lakers are going to lose it. And they never got a shot away. And they didn't call a timeout. That's what surprises me the most, that you get possession, you don't call the timeout and set something up. Great. It's a great shot of LeBron. Already in the showers. Uh, look, Westbrook says he was fouled, and Bede says he's unlucky. Chandler, what say you? Um, yeah, this is tough. This could go either way. I actually like the no timeout call here. I don't like giving the defense chance to set up you know the ball is going to either go to russ or lebron in this situation the defense is getting back in transition i like the no timeout if you're russ though you got to get a better look than this you got to get a shot at the rim this is the worst possible outcome here um i'd like to see lebron obviously with the ball in his hands here but even if troy brown gets that pass i don't know if it's going to be the best look i don't think he got fouled here either I think it's pretty good idea, uh, pretty good defense from the big man. But look, you have your second best player, point guard, on a mismatch against the center. I don't know what out of a timeout you could get better than this, but yeah, you, you gotta you gotta get a shot up to give yourself a chance. I would even went a little quicker if I was Russ, but that's not how you want the game to end. It's it's sloppy, Eddie. Like, I mean, what were you thinking? Yeah, I mean, look, coaching is hard, and the easiest <laughs> things to coach from the couch are subs and timeouts. So everybody sat there and watched the Mavericks game and said, "Yo, why he didn't? Why didn't he sub anybody in overtime? Why he didn't call a timeout?" And then this game as well, they said, "Why didn't call a timeout?" I actually like the matchup. It's fine. Russ played a great game yesterday. Had triple double. He shot fifty percent from the floor. He he was good. He he helped keep them steady. Again, they're competing with a contender in the East, and then they just did the same thing with the Mavericks a few days before. They're not as bad as like we would like to think, but you got to get that ball in LeBron's hand at that point. I get it. What he said afterwards, he's trusting Russell Westbrook. He's a former MVP. It's a matchup he likes. It, look, Joel Embiid is a great defender, and and in that situation where look, he knows the sh- the shot clock is short. He knows he, Russ only got a certain amount of time, and Russ can't shoot jumpers. It's a little bit easier for him. Call a timeout. Get the ball to LeBron and figure it out from there. Uh, I, I don't like it. I get his rationale. And again, it's so easy to armchair coach when all we're thinking about is timeouts and subs. But my whole thing is LeBron has to touch that ball at that point. He also had a great game, a better game than Russ. And he kind of like deserved that shot. But hey, it is what it is. Uh, LeBron was clearly, very clearly not happy with the decision no. walking off the court. And so, yeah, you hate to relegate LeBron to, to a bystander with the game on the line. 
This is like two really, really tough losses for the Lakers and a stretch without Anthony Davis where you need everyone you can get. And so the, the Mavericks loss, this loss last night, like they're going to be kicking themselves weeks from now when these two games are very important. But I think, listen, the no timeout call, I agree with Chandler, was a good call. But once Russ tries to drive once and then has to bring it back out, we've seen that movie before with this Lakers team, with Russ Westbrook, when he tries to get by someone like it's not like how it used to be, right? So that's where you call the timeout, where there's still four or five seconds left and and you know he gave Russ you know Darvin Ham gave Russ multiple chances to get to the basket I don't know if that's the most prudent move in that moment and like Eddie said LeBron James that's a moment where he has to touch the ball some form or fashion so Chandler that's the thing I think people are whether you like the timeout no timeout what have you at the end of the day that seems to be a moment where Darvin Ham should be stepping in and a lot of people are kind of questioning that today where do you stand on his coaching there at the end I mean, look, again, like Sean just said, at, once he kind of fumbled the ball and didn't have a straight line drive or a good look, that's maybe where I agree. Burn the timeout, draw something up. I don't care if the defense gets set. I don't care if they know it's going to LeBron or Russ. You know, you got to get something and you got to get a look at the hoop. Not getting a shot off, again, that's the worst possible scenario. And that's a nightmare for a coach. And if Russ happened to hit a step back or got to the lane and got fouled, we're not even talking about should he have called a timeout. Just it just didn't go his way. But again, I'd like to see Russ have gone quicker, but yeah, just knowing what we know now, you'd love to see him burn a timeout there and, and put the ball in their best player's hands. But you, you got to get a shot off there and at least give your chance, uh, your team a chance. Um, on the Embiid side of things, he had 35 and 12. Seems like this team is turning things around Shams. What do you think the biggest reason for that is? The biggest reason, I think, is the communication and just the energy and the flow that you're seeing right now with James Harden and Joel Embiid. They're talking after every game, raving about each other. That line of communication has never been better. And we were talking all year, at the beginning at least, about just the two different styles of play. And you're starting to finally see how this team is, is, is coexisting with one another. This is the best stretch they've had. Uh, that Joel Embiid's had with a co-star in, in a while, uh, at least the last two, three years. So, um, you know, kudos for them to figure it out. And we saw last night Tyrese Maxey came off the bench. That's a level of sacrifice for this team. He's clearly a starting caliber player who's made the decision. Doc Rivers said it was more on Tyrese Maxey to come up with the idea to come off the bench. He's, he's sacrificed. And we saw his answer after the game. He said, I want to be a professional, whether I'm starting or coming off the bench. This team is probably a little bit better suited with De'Anthony Melton as a starter. And then Tyrese Maxey can take over coming off the bench. So you're starting to see a lot of the things align for this team from a sacrifice perspective and, and role and continuity. Yeah, it's this. I mean, this team's just getting healthy. They're hitting their stride. A month ago, we were talking about Tyrese Maxey is their second best player, and James Harden is their third. And it's this just shows you how good James Harden still is when he's facilitating, when he's on, and when him and a big guy like Joel, they're getting along. They're having fun. They're winning games. And you haven't seen this before with this duo. And it's going to take time for Tyrese Maxey. I think he's he is their second best player, and I think he should be starting. But I do love the options of a Milton of a of a Melton of people like that, that they can sub in there with the defensive mindset. Cause they struggled defensively last night. It wasn't pretty for them defensively. And that was a game. Honestly, they, they could have easily lost. Um, but this is a team that's super dangerous. They have, you know, a, a great big, they have great guards. They're deep. You know, Niang guys like Niang had a huge shot last night. Um, and the more, the more comfortable, the more legs Tyrese Maxey gets, this team is going to really be dangerous. I feel like they have a really good problems to have, like that team does. Um, on the LeBron thought side, second player in NBA history to score 38,000 points. The Kareem countdown is officially official right now. Uh, here's a jerk question I'm going to ask, but I'm going to enjoy it, Eddie. <clears throat> would we enjoy these milestones more if perhaps he would have stayed in Cleveland? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Like LeBron kind of represents the modern mercenary NBA. I, I get the whole thing of like, yo, a guy stays with a team his whole career. It means a little more and, and yada, yada. But that's for the local fans. For everybody else, it's like, yo, when he breaks this record, it's kind of cool that he's doing it in state moves and, and whatever. But I, I don't know that it would mean more. I, I think it'd mean more to Cleveland for sure. But, uh, you know, Le Le LeBron is a team unto himself. And and so it's going to mean more to the LeBron fans, whatever day and team he does it for. And I, I think that's what it all comes down to for the most part. 
Yeah, I think it would. I think it would be cooler if the Lakers were good too, and these games were exciting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's fair. If they, were, if they were winning and playing in these big, meaningful games while LeBron's breaking this record, I think that would pack a little bit more of a punch. Um, but no, I don't think going from Miami, Cleveland, Lakers, I don't think that matters, but this is an unbelievable accomplishment. It just, it feels like that's why the Lakers are playing this year for LeBron to break this record. And it would mean a lot more, it'd be a lot cooler to me if the Lakers, you know, made a push and got into the playoffs and, and, you know, had a better season, but regardless, it's, it's a hell of an accomplishment and he's on pace and he's going to be the most points ever in the history of the game. It's nuts. It's like a, it's a moral victory for Lakers fans. Like there's something to, to root for I suppose, if you're into that. Yeah. There's something, something to do. Um, Shams, you know, we're not getting out of the Lakers topic without me asking you the latest on Mr. AD's return. So Anthony Davis is expected to start running now. So once that happens and he's back onto the floor running full speed, at that point he's going to progress to contact work in the relative near future And so uh, I'm told that the hope is that Anthony Davis is going to be able to get back out on the floor with a handful of games left before the All-Star break. So that puts you out uh, at about early February for a potential return for Anthony Davis to get back on the floor. He's got a bone spur issue. He's got a stress reaction in that foot. And so he's one of the guys that should be in the All-Star game this year, voted in. He's already among the leaders in the fans. So you've got to come back before the All-Star break if you want to play in the game itself. We'll see if he's going to be able to make it back. But right now the goal is for Anthony Davis to be back out on the floor uh, with about a handful of games left. And that puts you right around trade deadline. And we'll see how that impacts which moves the Lakers could make. (laughs) Oh, it's going to get good. It's going to be fun. Uh, Moving on to the Nets. What is going on? Ben Simmons, late scratch. Had a little back soreness. Uh, They fall to the Thunder, 112-102. Eddie, on a disappointment scale, I'd like to hear what you think about this one. Uh, It's pretty up there. You know, even with Kevin and Ben out, uh, they were there in the the game the entire night and just faltered down the stretch. And, you you know, we're watching the shots now. These are easy shots for the Thunder over and over, dunks and dunks and it, the, the, like what's going on there. Um, it was a frustrating watch for sure. And it's a game, you don't overlook the Thunder. They're a competitive team. They're just out of the play in right now. They're ahead of the Lakers who we've spent 10 TV minutes talking about. Um, they're they're a good team. This is not a bad team. So it, 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 you always knew it was going to be a tough game, a tough night for Kyrie, tough night for a couple other guys as well. Very disappointing loss. And in, you're, you're looking at, you know, they said at least another week until they evaluate Kevin and then however further along he goes with that. And so you're looking at some time now and you're looking at some tough games coming up as well. You played the Warriors, you're going to play Lakers at home. You, you got some stuff coming up. They got to find ways to win some of these games while he's out. And uh, it's frustrating that they lost that one because he, going in, you think you still have a chance as the better team and at home against the young thunder and didn't go their way late. Yeah, this was a, this was a tough loss, but the Thunder are good and the Thunder are playing for the future, but they play so hard and they're play and they're having fun. And SGA and Josh Giddy, those kids are absolute hoopers that play the right way, that see the floor, that are making the game easier for these other guys that don't have a lot of experience in the NBA. You got a guy like Lou Dort, who I feel like is a vet. He's, he's, he's also still young and he just grinds defensively. Uh, I really like what they're doing, but yeah, on the, on the flip side, this is a time for Brooklyn where it's dangerous. You're missing your best player and you just have to sustain and you have to tread water. And they've now dropped a couple and Kyrie Irving can't have 15 points in a game like this. He's got to dominate. He's got to take over games like this. And he's going to be the reason why they stay afloat with KD out. But uh, this was a tough loss, but one thing I learned is I'm not saying another bad word about Utah because, uh, his- <laughs> His man base <laughs> is out of control, but he did go over two from the three point line last night. If you're going to oh, be wow. one of the best shooters, if you're going to be one of the best shooters in the NBA, and you got all these people getting your back, <laughs> you got to step up and make some shots. But no, uh, this, this, these are games that the Nets have to win. I don't care who's in, who's out. This is KD's out, Kyrie's out. This is a, this is a game they got to win. We got to keep a three chart behind. Since you have a blank wall anyways, we might as well turn that into like a Yuta Watanabe three chart. And then we just keep track <laughs> as we go. <laughs> my Rudy Gobert is my Rudy yes. Gobert. Everybody has one, except for Shams. Shams is not biased. Um, Kyrie, by, by the way, speaking of Kyrie and not, not being able to just have 15 in a game like this, he did have an interesting answer to a reporter's question post-game. Here he is. 
To that point, it's kind of easy to look at last year when Kevin goes down, you guys lose 11 in a row, and then look at how you guys started now. How do you? What can you take from the way things kind of fell off the wheels last season to kind of maybe ensure that it doesn't happen this time around? Uh, well, I'm consistently in the lineup that helps. Uh, we also don't have halfway in or halfway in anybody in the locker room. Um, and there's just a, a primary focus on the big picture here. I like that whole vibe that was going on there. Look, they have a five game road trip that starts Tuesday here in San Antonio. Um, I don't know what fairness is in this one, Eddie, right? Like, is he supposed to fill KD's shoes? Like what exactly is a fair expectation for Kyrie? Well, if, Kendrick Perkins is arguing with the world about this right now, but if, if Kyrie is a superstar or an all-star, and I think he's an all-star, I think he's a superstar. Yeah. You should be able to carry the offense a little bit against these teams and, and win some of these games. And I, I think it's fair to expect that. I think Kyrie expects that of himself. We're talking about somebody from, you know, the, the Kobe tree of influence. So he's feeling like he can do this. He had a tough night last night, obviously. And then you don't expect that every night, but uh, yeah, I think it's absolutely fair to expect him to be able to tread water at least while Kevin's out. I think he and the rest of the Nets and the rest of the league understand that, yeah, Kevin's their best player and he kind of makes the, the boat float. But <laughs> Kyrie should be able to handle some of that as well. We're talking about two-week, three-week stretch and, and and some winnable games coming up on, on the schedule. They play your Spurs in What's a few that? days here. And, oh, yeah, uh, right. you know, you expect to win that game. But um, no, I think it's absolutely fair. And I think uh, Kendrick Perkins thinks it's fair as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Kyrie Irving is a superstar. He's an all-star. He's a go-to guy. He's a number one option on a lot of teams. Uh, so it's definitely fair to say that he needs to step up. He needs to kind of orchestrate the offense. He needs to go and get 30, 40, 50, have some of these crazy games Ooh. that all the other guys are doing. Um, but it also falls on the other guys. It also falls on everybody on that Nets roster where it's it's a collective effort. When you got a guy like Kevin Durant go out, everybody needs to step up. Guys are going to be playing more minutes than the crunch time that they're not used to playing. Uh, so it, it kind of falls on everybody, but yeah, a lot now, now Kyrie Irving, you're the best player. This is your team now for the foreseeable future. And a lot of it is, is on him to kind of produce, and keep them afloat. If they want to continue to stay in that, you know, home court advantage, uh, you know, area. I think there's an understandable fear with Katie out of a repeat sort of, of what happened last year. Um, and so then I ask you Shams, When's he coming back? Well, I think the hope and the optimism is still right before the All-Star break uh, with, with plenty of time to spare before the All-Star break, which is good news for the Nets. It, it's not as serious as it was last year when he missed six weeks. But there's no doubt, like you said, Michelle, like these guys have to step up in his absence. Th this 25 or 75 percent, uh, you know, 25 or 75 from three, that's 33 percent from three point range. That's unacceptable. You're just not going to win many games like that. Kyrie Irving has gone 16 to 44 in the two games without KD. That's 36 uh, percent from mm. the field. That's just not going to cut it either. So for sure, him stepping up his game two back to back off nights is tough. Uh, off nights from three point range is going to be tough without him, especially Seth Curry had a big game last night. But Joe Harris. Uh, Utah, there were a few guys that just did not shoot the ball well. So they're, they're going to need all hands on deck. This this team is much better equipped to play without uh, Durant this year. They've just got to go out there and prove it now. I'm sure he'll have a career night here on Tuesday. Uh, you're welcome ahead of time, Eddie. How about we move on to the Warriors? What is going Why? Other than what they did here on Friday night, the Warriors on the road are just awful. They only have four wins so far away from home. They lost to the Bulls. They're four and 17. That's below 500, sitting eighth in the West. Shams, you were at this one. The, if you could put it into words, what's the most noticeable thing or notable thing that you were able to notice in this game, period? Why? Well, on both sides, for, for, for the Warriors, what I'm what I'm seeing is just the attention of detail, uh, on, especially on the defensive end, is just not there. Guys just aren't. It doesn't look like they're on the same page. There's a lot of uh, you know vocal players, especially on the sideline. Draymond Green, second half of the game, was very animated on the bench. Uh, not quite sure what he was upset at, but he was very animated, and you could see the frustration was boiling over at some points in the second half of the game. This is a Warriors team that's one in ten against the Eastern Conference on the road. Not a good sign, not a good look. This team is night and day at home versus on the road. It's just not a sign of a championship contender, but we'll see. They have the pieces to turn it around. Klay Thompson said after the game, I'm not worried. We'll find our stride. Jermon Green, likewise, I think they're all uh, optimistic that they'll be able to figure it out. 
And on the other side, the Bulls, like Nikola Vucevic had a 40 and 10 game. Zach Levine had a solid game as well. No DeMar DeRozan. He should be back here this <clears> week. But I think this is a team, we spoke about it last week. I'm told it's not in their mindset to blow it up. They want to be competitive, want to try to see if this team can make a playoff run. You look at the roster, it's not an issue about, about talent. It's an issue about connectivity and this team figuring it out. And, uh, you know, maybe they need to get Nikola Vucevic more involved every single game. Yeah, and, and the Bulls, they looked like a really good team last night when they have that big three and they have Vucevic playing like Jokic. They're, they're really good. And I do think Lonzo Ball is critical to this team. When you have two wing scores like DeMar and Zach, you need someone to set them up. You need someone to initiate offense. And, and they're missing that kind of real point guard. Um, but like like Sham said, they have the talent. They have the depth. They have size. They have the roster to be good for whatever reason, they are just not playing well this year. Um, but last night they, they were, they were, they were flying around. They, they were better defensively. And when you go to the Warriors, you, you can't give up 132 points to the Chicago Bulls and, and have let Vucevic <laughs> get off like that. And, and, and it's defensively, these guys, we know how explosive they are offensively. They have so many pieces that can get hot and beat you, but they're not rotating. They're not talking defensively. They're not giving that second and third efforts defensively. And, and they're and they're horrible on the road. So yeah, I'm not worried either, like Clay said. But it's January. Like, when are we gonna worry? Because this is starting to become who they are. So they got to get it in gear here. But uh, this was this was not a, a, a good a good start, like a good a good finish. This, they did they did not play well. Does that surprise you, Eddie? By the way, Vucevic, uh, Demar, Levine. The fact that when they are on, they're able to do what they are, but they're just sitting, what, 10th in the East? Is that what I just said? Yeah, 10th in the East. So do you think that they have enough to actually make some noise, especially if with based on Shams, they don't really plan on blowing anything up? So what do you what do you think they can do? It's tough for them because they dug such a hole. And, and, and much like the Warriors, they seem to be inconsistent night in and night out. Between the three guys, I mean, 43 points is massive, but we don't get that from Boots every night. Um, their issue, and it's funny, we didn't see it as much against the Warriors. I mean, they still gave up 118 points. Their issue has been defense all year long, just their effort on defense and kind of waiting on Lonzo Ball for that and then expecting Alex Caruso to ha- carry a ton of that, the load there. And I love Alex Caruso, but he cannot be your defensive anchor on the team that you want to win playoff games with. Um, so it's, it's, if they can sure up their defense, you know, but I don't know that they're equipped with that. I don't, with Vooch and, and with, the way Zach Levine has defended over the last few years, I, I don't know that they're just set to be a defensive stalwart in the playoffs. Um, can they climb up the standings? They're right behind the Hawks and uh, who else? The you know the, the Pacers. The Pacers look better every night. Yeah, and then the Heat, who's just slowly getting better. So it's gonna be tough for them to climb up the standings anyway. Um, you know, I, I don't know if they can make some noise. They can maybe get that playoff spot that they want. I get why they're not giving in. Like they've 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 invested so much money into these guys and this lineup and. It was just last year they were, you know, home court advantage this this far into the season. And so they probably see the potential there, but I don't know about making noise. Um, their next game, <laughs> it's Thursday in Paris. <laughs> Not as so good. Chandler, <laughs> I, these one-off international games, they just they're all over the place. But as a player, I mean they seem very happy they're on the plane. Would you want to play in Paris? Uh, I mean, Paris is awesome. There's, there's yeah. the NBA is a big deal over there. I don't know if I'd want to do this in the middle of the season. Like I, I went and did uh, Taiwan and Philippines when I was on the Rockets for a preseason and it was a blast. And the fans over there are so passionate and it's a great opportunity to kind of, you know, learn and see different parts of the world and play in front of new fans. It's a, it's an incredible experience. This in the middle of a season with, you know, the flight, the jet lag, the, you know, piling in a couple of games that you miss here and there back end. It, it's tough, uh, it, but it's definitely fun. It's definitely a, a, a great experience for these young guys. I bet you a lot of them have not been to Paris. Uh, so just the simple fact of going to sightsee and do all the things that, but in the middle of your season, uh, it, it would be tough. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I get what Taylor's going for. The NBA is just going to keep doing these games. They're clearly focused on like global expansion, both in the way they market their players and things like this. They played a game in Mexico City last month as well. And, you know, I there's always been rumors like, yo, maybe they'd have a team in this city and then this country and, and all of that. And, you know, I wouldn't be shocked. We live to the point where plans get faster and they actually have a plan 
a team in Paris or something like that, but they're going to keep doing these games and, and, you know, they get a good couple of days off before and get a couple of days off after to deal with the jet lag. And, you know, it's not the worst job in the world. I get, I get My what Chandler's God. saying though. It is tough to throw into the middle of the schedule as you're coming up on the break here. Guys, you lay down on the plane, you fly overnight. So there's your eight hours of sleep. When you land, it's a beautiful day in Paris. What are we talking about? I could be there by tonight. You guys just let me know. When... I'm mad that the San Antonio Spurs didn't get to do this trip. That's probably oh, the only thing I hate about this whole Michelle. story. Michelle's got to be out there. It's going to be. I love it would Paris. Be dangerous yeah. with Michelle on the streets in Paris. Yeah, I need no excuse. No. And there's a chance to have brunch with Tony Parker. I already saw the NBA tweet that out. So there you go. Uh, moving on to the. It looks like probably the third time MVP. Nikola Jokic, uh, game-winning three against the Magic, time expiring. Also had his 70th career triple-double last night. Uh, Magic head coach Mosley said after the game, an MVP-type player makes the MVP-type play. That's what it came down to. <clears throat> this conversation will go on until the awards are handed out, but Chandler, is Jokic starting to really distance himself in this thing? I think so. And I think this season it's, it's, it's so close because every night, every week, one of these MVP finalist guys has an explosive night, has a crazy night where it makes us think, Oh, maybe, you know, maybe he's in the lead now. Maybe he's, you know, you know, so it kind of keeps going back and forth. But when you watch Jokic last night, the guy took 11 shots. He went eight <laughs> for 11. He went eight for 11. He's so efficient. The way he plays, we really have never seen a big play like this where you can initiate the offense through him. He gets the rebound. He takes it coast to coast. He, the guy's shooting 62% from the field because he doesn't take bad shots. He doesn't force. His vision is unbelievable unbelievable uh, at the beginning of the season i was i was finding every excuse to be like no way i can give this guy a third mvp someone else give it to a luca give it to a tatum who's having a great year on the best team i can't this guy is unbelievable <laughs> he's averaging 25 uh, he's averaging a triple double they're the best team in the western conference uh, and he makes everybody around him so much better. It's not just one of these guys with gaudy stats that's putting up 40, 50. This guy is making his team better. He's making his team the best team in the Western Conference pretty much for the majority of the season. Um, and it's so impressive what he's doing. So, yeah, I think it's him. And I, I and I think it's truly remarkable that he could possibly win Ooh. three in a row. That is unheard of. Look at that. Yeah, I think, he's, I think he's... I think he's running away with it. I mean, I've been calling the MVP a narrative award for some time and, and the narrative is building. And the only narrative block he had was voter fatigue. And now the voters are fighting back at voter fatigue. They're saying, yo, that's not a real thing. That shouldn't exist. This is in a <laughs> vacuum. Doesn't matter. Like suddenly we've shifted the narratives. Last year, the narrative was like, yo, they would have never been in the sixth seed if he wasn't there and he wins the MVP. This year it's well, he's the one seed and he has the best stats. So now he's the MVP. Uh, he, he, I'm not trying to diminish what he's doing. He's playing incredibly well. But if you just look at the way people vote and the things that they weigh when they do that, Luca is seven games back in the standing. So if you had him as close, that's that's a big enough gap. Uh, Jason Tatum, we're already kind of writing him off as, as a competitor here for the award. Kevin just went down for two, three, maybe four weeks. And so who is left? Giannis, they're slipping and they're up and down all season long. The MVP is his to lose at this point, halfway through the season. And it's, it's, you know, it's kind of like the coronation of, of Jokic right now. And like all the things Chandler said, he's averaging a triple double. He's got the best record in the West. He's, he's looking incredible night in and night out. And so I get it. I can hear the noise. I can see the noise. I can see the narrative already building up help. If he remains healthy, that award is his. Let's talk about the other awards. And, and the combo is already over as far as I'm concerned. Wow. Right. How about how stoic? <laughs> how about how stoic he was? Like he hits that it's a crazy shot, game winner, and he just has no reaction at all. I love <laughs> I love the fact that Nikola Jokic is gonna just be him unabashed. And so uh shout out to Nikola Jokic for that. But I think if this team is the number one seed in the West, um it's hard not to look at him as as, as the MVP for sure. And I know if you're Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets, the, the expectations that they've set on themselves is trying to win a championship. So they've been to the conference finals before. If they get the number one seed, individual accolades are cool. But I know what this team is going to be going for, what Calvin Booth is going to be aiming for, is try to get this team to a championship. And so uh, those are going to be the expectations, especially if they get the number one seed. But 
It's going to be tough to deny Nikola Jokic of an MVP if they're the number one seed in the West. And by the way, the Nuggets have been doing a good job of putting out content. There's a pop culture contest between he and Jamal Murray that just shows his person. I mean, his personality, it's something. It, it, it's funny to watch and it's adorable. And, and that's all I have to say, because it sounds creepy after that. Uh, we're taking a quick break right here, but we've got the latest on my favorite thing in the whole wide world, the slam dunk contest and the latest edition of That Man Has a Family when we return. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up. Welcome back. This is Run It Back, and the uh, the slam dunk contest is taking shape slowly but surely. Shams, wow us with the latest. So this is a little bit of history. Uh, there's a guard by the name of Mac McClung on the Philadelphia 76ers G League team, the Delaware Blue Coats. Uh, he's accepted an invitation to be in the dunk contest, not the G League dunk contest, the NBA dunk contest uh, from what i'm told and he becomes the first outright g league player ever to be in the nba dunk contest he's accepted this invite so this is a bit of history he's known as like this internet phenom he's, he's definitely a phenomenal athlete at six foot two uh but he's a guy that gets a lot of traction on the internet uh on social media for his dunks so he'll join shaden sharp of portland KJ Martin of Houston. So he'll be the third participant so far committed. Look for a fourth participant to round out this list. The, the league is looking at OB Toppin really strongly. You know, the guy, uh, you know, he, he won last year's, uh, you know, dunk contest and he was in it the year before as well. So uh, it could be a third straight year for OB Toppin. But yes, Mac McClung, uh, a little bit of history here. Hmm. When you say the league is looking at Obi, have they just all but given up on the superstars? I mean, that's, we're just should we just give up on superstars being in this? Is that the deal? Just tell me now. <laughs> I mean, we haven't seen a history of that. Right? I mean, I guess Zach Levine, Aaron Gordon were like the last two uh, starter caliber players to be in it at a high level. I mean, Obi Toppin did it uh, last year. Donovan Mitchell did it a few years ago. So. I mean, it's just tough when guys reach a certain level, right? Like a John ja Morant. I think everyone's clamoring for John ja Morant to be mm -hmm. in it. But once a, once a guy reaches a certain level of stature, it's like they just don't want to do it, I guess. Chandler, your reaction to the news of Mac McClellan. Uh, <laughs> Eddie, I mean, if you don't stop a, laughing right now, I swear, we'll come through this screen. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cool thing what they're doing, where they're giving these guys that aren't household names that now have an opportunity on national TV, on a huge stage to perform. And it, it's Tom's just introduced Mac McClung. A lot of people don't know who that is. That's, I don't know if that's the guy that you want for a dunk contest. But this is a kid who I've heard of just from the internet. He's like a millennial Gen Z viral dunker. And I knew about him, you know, from, you know, Instagram and Twitter before he even went and played college basketball and went to Georgetown. Um, I had heard about him, but is, I think there's a G League dunk contest as well, correct? Sounds like it. Yeah. yeah. There has so, been, there has been years past, but I, I think they stopped it in the last few years. So I don't know okay. if it's still around, but. It was yeah. for sure at one point. That's I mean, what look, I first thought when I heard the news. I'm like, it's got to be the G League dunk contest. There's no way it's the NBA right. dunk contest. But yeah, I think it's cool. It, it gives these guys in the G League, a, you know, hope to be able to do this. And I think with his viral kind of reputation, I think that's the reason this kid particularly is in. But again, I think the dunk contest is kind of, it's getting watered down now. And guys want to see stars. Guys want to see household names. But like Sham said, all-Star Weekend is kind of a weekend to kind of chill, to party, to make a lot of money and doing events and, and appearances. A lot of big names aren't going to, to participate anymore. So it'll be interesting to see. I hope he does really well. I hope it's exciting. Um, but I just, I, just, I just don't know. I don't like the idea of not knowing who these kids are in a dunk contest. Yeah, look, I, I like Mac. I remember his Instagram tapes. It's cool to see a short white dude dunking. Like, I get it. <laughs> I get the whole appeal. It was fun when he went to Georgetown. He's not an NBA player. He's had an NBA chance. Yeah. He's not an NBA player. I'm not exactly sure why he's in the NBA dunk contest. Uh, if you're going to do this, go get some of those viral dunkers. Go get Guy Dupuy. Go yeah, get the, the guy who does the, the 720 or the between the legs. Talk. Go get those guys. Just just do a dunk showcase if that's what you're going to do. This is a little strange to me. I, I get it. Mac probably put on a great show. It is kind of funny that in the highlight reel, it's just a bunch of like simple two-handed dunks and, and, and not much splash to it. Anyway, go get Jericho Sims. He's touching the rim with his shoulder so we see that he can jump this high. Go get him. Go get guys. 
I promise there's four guys in this league, and they might not be starters. They might not be great players, but they want to do the dunk contest. Get four guys that want to do it, and hopefully can put on a show. But yeah, yeah I, isn't Obi Toppin hurt? Like I'm, I'm confused I'm about so this whole confused. thing. confused. And not only that, but if these NBA guys lose to a G League dude, that just changes this entire thing forever. You know what? I stick to my original idea. Go get Dominique Wilkins. Go get Brent Berry. Go get the old guys. I will watch them dunk. Get Vince. Vince, I know for a fact Vince could still dunk. I just saw him like two weeks ago. He looks fine because that I would rather watch. So Mac McClung wins wins the dunk contest this year. Next year, they're just going to let the most athletic That's what I'm saying. guys participate like it's, it's yeah, not apparently. NBA play. they're not NBA players and they're it's, it's, or we just it's call great. it a showcase like Eddie said we call it a show or like oh, maybe yeah, you buy it. a TV at Best Buy and you get to enter the dunk contest like we're just gonna let anybody in off the streets <laughs> all to be in the NBA dunk weekend, contest all-star weekend dunk contest because it's not the NBA dunk contest if we're just letting anybody do it I just put wait. the Sean, trampolines is- out and bring celebrities like let me Mill do a flip at a yes. dunk it's just do that slam ball <laughs> I'm in slam ball dunk contest let's make it that. happen Nobody wants to see this, Shops. <laughs> I don't want to do with this. All right, Listen, I'm not gonna, I don't want to get Max trouble. stuff pops off on, on social media, though. Like, his thing, Wait. like, if the league is going for that Gen Z audience and millions of viewers on social media, like, that's not a bad guy. He's, I mean, he might get more views than any, anyone else in the dunk. I mean, I hope just he kills. Real. I really do. Uh-huh. I hope he kills. Vince Carter dunking will get more views than Mac McClung. Period. Fact. Science. I, see, but that I agree with. That I agree yeah. with. I think they got to petition happen. that. I think Michelle, like you're on to something. Let's figure this out. All right, fine. There's some, uh, you know, real mm-hmm. basketball news to talk about. Lakers working out both Myers Leonard and Boogie Cousin Shams. Any shot in the world that either one of these guys gets to play? I think the Lakers are looking at which guy they want to sign, how imminent they want to do it. If AD really is on his way back uh, here in the next few weeks, do they even really need a big? Maybe you sign a big to buy time, but both of those guys worked out. Darvin Ham said they look great. Uh, Myers Leonard, of course, has not played since um, January, March of 2021. He had the anti-Semitic slur on TV. He had shoulder and ankle surgeries as well that derailed him. He was literally unable to step foot on on a court and and be cleared for workouts until this past week. So he's back on the trail. DeMarcus Cousins has been working out in Vegas. From what I'm told, teams have been looking into him. He does appear in great shape, uh, but this was his first formal workout. We'll see if either gets signed. They do have an open roster spot as of today. Uh, Sterling Brown, who signed a 10-day, is no longer uh, on 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 his 10-day contract. So uh, we'll see who they sign. I'm curious. Chandler has played against both of these guys. Knows, I'm sure, both these guys. W- who do you think is the best fit for this team? I mean, I like shooting. And Myers Leonard can shoot the ball. He can space the floor. He can defend. Uh, I haven't seen any of them in you know, quite some time. So I don't know the <laughs> shape that they're in. But, yeah, I think, I think the Lakers could use a lot of help, especially with AD out. I don't know if it would be for the rest of the season. But why not throw a big body out there, a vet? Um, I'd like to put a, a, a good positive locker room guy there. So, you know, it, it's, you know, one of them I think could help and and they're both talented. They both, they both actually boogie can shoot the ball too now, but uh, I, are any of these guys putting them over the top? I don't think so, but yeah, I think both of these guys can still play in the NBA and help. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I like that workout. <laughs> I'm curious, are any, either of these guys even going to play over Wayne and Gabriel? You know, th- this is a guy that they've been closing games with because he's a little more mobile as a big and he actually can pop out and hit a three from time to time. Uh, you know, I- I'm very curious why they feel like they need a big and they're working bigs out when Anthony Davis should be returning imminently and, and Thomas Bryant and Wayne and Gabriel have been playing well for them over the last month or so. So it's just, you know, like all things in the Lakers, just curious team building. But I guess they feel they need a big guy who can kind of shoot. I like that. It's curious team building, as we say about the Lakers this year. <laughs> Shams, thank you as always. We shall see you bright and early manana. Um, but guys, we have to do a little That Man Has a Family. And it's sort of a tease to all of us because it's the all dunk edition. What could have been? Oh, my sweet, sweet no. <laughs> this was one of the nastiest bodies I've seen in a really long time. It's so good. It's so good. I did like a real face palm when I seen. It. I couldn't. Oh. If Jaw gets to jump off two feet, just move. Just right. Just, don't don't bother. I love that he leans into it too. He tweets about it and he says, you know, if you want to go viral, come jump By in. By the way, <laughs> that that's a great tweet that he had. I also, and when I look at this, I just think of poor strength. His core uh. strength is stupid. 
even like the move yep. to like kind of split this little pick and roll oh. right here. It's mm. everything about this play is sensational. <laughs> It's the whole the team. stat that, that he has now dunked on every team is like one of the most weirdly impressive stats I've ever heard for a guard at that it. height. It's... You know, even though he jumps that well, that's this is why that we need guys like him in the dunk Thank contest. You. We want to see more of this. <laughs> no defense, right? I know with no defense, let me watch him shine. Yeah, yeah this, that's I'm a forty-five you, this for me. It's gonna be weird. It's gonna be weird. How about a little Nas Reed, on Mr. Jared Allen? Mm, no. Wait, is that not Jared Allen? I don't, it's not anybody. Oh, here it goes. Oh, this one. That's, oh, these are all oh, yeah, those. Like, that's not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a lot. All right. These are a see. lot of dunks. Mm. Well, there's Jared that, Allen, so there he is. All that's right. a nice in and out. <laughs> that's a nice in and out. Collection of bangers. That's fine. Uh, uh, Kawhi. Nice read on a real team. <laughs> Kawhi's playing, you guys. Kawhi's playing. Big Kawhi. <laughs> Kawhi. I love to see Kawhi doing this. Me too. Kawhi. This shows this us that Kawhi is, Kawhi is a great resume of just dunking on guys' heads. No flash to it. Just, no, I'm going to jump higher than you. I'm going to bounce the head, ball off your head. I mean, you this think Jokic doesn't show emotion. Good Lord. This is robot I, all the way. I love yeah, it. I like it. Kawhi is my, my guy. I like it. <laughs> Moments later, by the way, same victim. This, this almost seems like we're piling on Zeke at this point. But John Wall, why? Let this man live. Oh, Ooh, that's his right he's foot, trying. left hand. This is what he does. This kid is just getting bodied left and right this game. Uh, right? He poor must guy. have gone home and had a poor real guy. come to Jesus moment in the mirror. Which what do you poor guy? Two, <laughs> two legends just send you home in the same night. Poor guy. <laughs> oh. But yeah, I, I appreciate it. Nice to see John Wall tried. do that as well, though. Yeah, I agree with that. All right, last but not least, Mr. Julius Arando. Oh, my. Mm. Oh. oh, he let that man down. Yo, Help him. I love the Daniel Gafford tries. Kevin dropped him earlier this year. He had his own <laughs> crazy dunk off the oop. And then, you know, it just comes back. The pendulum swings. That's disgusting, though, Julius. That's just me. That's a that big guy mean. to get dunked on by. Yeah, right? Yeah, no, no wonder it like hurt. That, That's a big is, that guy, is that guy okay? Is Daniel Gafford okay? <laughs> just check uh, on him. <laughs> Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> I told you, I've told guys. you this before. Stay down. Stay down. It's it's tough though as a big guy because you are getting ripped in film tomorrow if you don't try and block attempts like right. this. Until yeah, but you, you get know a what? You're right getting right face. But I feel like you're getting made fun of either way. So I'd rather just sure. not try. The lose, that's my, that's my... situation. <laughs> you hear that, kids? It's better not to try than to be mocked. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break. Uh, coming up next, a little you buying that is James Harden a lock Hall of Fame, and how about a little Lori Markkinen? Are we locking him up for the All Star game? Welcome back. We're going to do a little you buying that. We start things off with James Harden. Recorded his 100th 30.10 assist game on Saturday. So Chandler, I ask you, are you buying that he is a lock Hall of Fame guy? Yes, he's a lock 1,000%. <laughs> uh, I think he's the only player to ever win six man of the year, a scoring title, and MVP. Uh, pretty much the only thing he's missing is an NBA championship, which he has a pretty good chance this year to get uh, obviously there's holes in his game defensively. Uh, and like I said, he's never won a championship, but the things that this dude has done offensively, the way he scored the ball, he's one of the best scorers of all time. His career numbers are great. He's played on the USA team. Uh, his resume speaks for itself. Uh, obviously I think a championship is the icing on the cake for this guy, but there is no doubt about it. He is generational talent. He is incredible. And he is a lock for the hall of fame. A lock Eddie. Yeah, no, absolutely. I know James is a little bit of a punchline, you know, we see his <laughs> belly and pitchers and he flops and all this stuff, but it's really easy to forget how great a career he's had. Three times scoring champ. He did that back to back to back year. He scored 36 a game one season. He, he's phenomenal. He made the 75th anniversary team. Um, he's made All NBA what uh, seven times, ten times All Star. He's an MVP. He's. It doesn't matter the class he goes in. I don't care if him, Kevin, and Steph all retire in the same season. Mm. He's the first ballot Hall of Fame. He's a lock. Um, there's no debate about it for me. 
That'd be a fun night if they all go at the same time. That'd be great, actually. Uh, moving on to Lori Markinen, who's getting so much shine this season, averaging 30 a game, nine rebounds in January. Um, are you buying him as a lock, Eddie, for the All-Star weekend? Yeah, I think he'll get in as a reserve, even if he gets some hometown love there. And I think he deserves it. 24 points a game this season, eight rebounds. He's kind of taking that step that – uh, you know, everybody who had stock in him early on was hoping he would take. And um, yeah, that wink spot, it, it'll be a fun time for him to play a couple minutes in that game. And, and he deserves it. He's been great all season long. Yeah, I agree. I think it, being in Salt Lake helps a lot. I think the his numbers are great. Um, you know, he's really blossom and flourishing and, and having a great year uh, this season with the injuries in the Western Conference. I, I think he's a for sure lock. He's not going to start. He's not going to play much in the game. But yeah, I think the hometown kid and the season he's having, he deserves to be in that game. Well, I can't help but hear a lot of caveats on why he will make it and why he's going to be a lock. So I give you this over under 1.5 all star appearances for Lori Markinen. Eddie first. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I'll say over because he's going to get one this year and there's a lot of time to get another one after that. Um, but that's a, that's a nice little bet. FanDuel, is that on the books? I might want to get in on that. <laughs> it can be. <laughs> Chandler, you didn't sound so sure. I'm not because I don't think they're going to be good for a while. I don't think they were supposed to be that good this year. And this kid's kind of come out of nowhere and had a hell of a year, but Considering he's going to get in this year and he's young, yeah, I'd probably take the over because he's got a solid eight to ten years to make another one, but that's tough. This could that's be lightning tough. in a bottle. This could be for him Tricky lightning in a bottle. We will find out. Time to take a quick break. Uh, the good news and the bad news is, either way, we've got our parlay when we come back. Take it as you want. Sometimes they're awful. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it up. Football fans, when you bet NFL same game parlays on the FanDuel Sportsbook from now through January 16th, hey, it's today, you can get up to $100 in free bets, win or lose. All you have to do is place a total of $20 or more on the NFL same game parlay bets during the wild card round. The more you bet, the more you'll get back in free bets. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. So as we like to end each show with a a three-leg parlay, we did exactly that on Wednesday, and we'd like to just pretend like we didn't because it was hot, stinky garbage, guys. All three of us just pooped the bed. I mean, epically, quite frankly. <laughs> it's not even close. <laughs> why, why would like, we even show this? This is so long. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, forgot. Eddie was the closest, in fairness. You and I, we lost by, like, double digits, Chandler. We were, it was gross. Yeah. Um, that's good news, though. Throw it away. We're starting over today. Eddie, you could just please kick us off on this fine, beautiful MLK Monday with some good news. Please go. Yeah, the good news is uh, Beetle finally missed on a pick, so she has joined the group officially, <laughs> and I like Team's that. Team's the worst. Uh, I'm doubling down with the Pacers. I'm taking the points tonight against the Bucks. Uh, I know they've lost three straight. I know that they, they have not looked great. I know they lost the bar late for me last week. <laughs> um, but fool me twice. Let's see it happen. Uh, that's too many like points. It. It's too enticing. That's a lot I like of that one. Yeah. All right, Chandler. <laughs> uh, I like the Heat. I like. I think the Heat are honestly a better team. I think they're playing better right now. I think they're kind of hitting their stride. They're figuring out. They're getting healthy. I. I think the Heat will win this game easily, which is scary. <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty scary because I'm not the most accurate picker. But Do you know what I, I love imagining is some serious betting people just stumbling upon our faces on the television, listening to us make these picks. And we're just like, I don't know. I'll try this one, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try again. I'm going to do Pelicans. I believe in this Pelican squad plus six and a half uh, at Cleveland. I mean, I like that I think one it's too. Gonna be a, Right. I feel like it's going to be a great game regardless. It's probably what I'm going to watch because uh, that football game has two evil forces in it and I can't deal with it. Bet $20, win 100 and well, 16, really. Um, guys, last chance to make any changes. We feeling it? <laughs> oh, I love them all. Let's ride. <laughs> yeah. Russell Wilson, Perfect. let's ride. I mean, I, I don't know if Brandon Ingram is back. I don't think he is. So when we lose, I'll blame Beetle, but. Uh, I like him. I like the other one. That's not the point. I know he's not. Is Jose Alvarado playing? Oh, hello. 
Oh, my gate! My God. Oh, that's a great way to end every single luck, show. Tom. That face is ridiculous. <laughs> that's going to do it for us. But as always, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 10 Eastern, AM. See you manana.